Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Brian's Horror Corner, and welcome to this horror movie review for day nine of my 31 Days of Halloween Horror series for the month of October here. So today we are going to take a look at what I would say is a very underrated movie that doesn't get near enough love. I've seen it once before, several years ago, bought it and added it to my collection sometime in the last year. Um, and that movie is from the early 2000s. Frailty with Bill Paxton and Matthew McConaughey. So yeah, I'm basically going to be blowing my load for the next 15 minutes talking about how much I like this movie. So um, stay tuned for that. So so yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. Frailty, frailty, frailty is more of a like a psychological thriller mystery, but it's definitely it falls into the horror realm as well as we'll get into my with my review here. So. Frailty is a 2001 psychological thriller film directed and starring Bill Paxton, his first directorial debut, as I think, co-starring Matthew McConaughey and, and Powers Boo. It marks Paxton's directorial debut. There you go. The plot focuses on the strange relationship between two young brothers and their, their fanatic, fanatically religious father, who believes that he has been commanded by God to kill demons disguised as people. So that's the, the straight-up premise of it. So basically the film opens. We have Fenton Meeks, who visits FBI agent Wesley Doyle, claiming that his brother Adam is the culprit in the God's Hand serial killings. Fenton says Adam has committed suicide, prompting Fenton to fulfill a promise to bury his brother in a public rose garden in their hometown of Thurman. He begins to tell Doyle about the boy's childhood and suggests that the bodies of of the God's Hand victims are buried in, suggests that the bodies of, of the God's Hand victims are buried in the Rose Garden. In the summer of 1979, when the brothers were children, their father told them that they, that he had been visited by an angel and, and tasked by God with destroying demons disguised as human beings, a mission which must be kept secret. Their father is led to three tools, an ax, gloves, and a pipe. He receives a list of names from the angel as well. He incapacitates a woman with a pipe and kills her and brings her home to kill her with an axe. When he lays his hands on her, he claims to see a vision of her evil, then kills her and makes the boys help him bury her in the rose garden. Fenton is horrified and believes his father is insane. Adam claims he sees the vision and supports their father. So that's sort of the setup and the premise of this movie. As far as the cast goes, we have the great Bill Paxton, rest in peace, as as Dad Meeks, Fenton and Adam's widowed father and serial killer. Matthew McConaughey as Adam Meeks slash Fenton Meeks. Powers Booth as FBI agent Wesley Doyle. Matt O'Leary as young Fenton, Adam's brother. Jeremy Sumter as young Adam, Fenton's brother. And Lou Askew as Sheriff Smalls. So yeah, that's Frailty. That's the setup, the premise, and the cast for Frailty from 2001. Um, <laughs> this movie needs more love, man. This movie's fantastic. I There's very few movies that engage me for the entire runtime of a movie. This is one of them, though. I absolutely love this movie. Let's just get into the, to the pros that I have here. I probably could have had more, quite frankly. Um... But you got to start with the fact that it's just a really solid, engaging, and creepy unfolding story that works so well on so many different levels. I mean, this movie's pretty deep. It has a lot of levels. It has a lot of viewers questioning themselves and what what they're watching. Um, it leaves it leaves the viewer at the end of the movie when the movie's over with questions and kind of trying to connect dots. Um, it leaves the viewer question which characters are. The way you might have viewed a character earlier in the movie versus how you viewed him after the movie was over. Who was good, who to root for, who you did root for at the end of the day, how that changed. Who's the bad guy at the end of the movie. It's just, it's got so much that works there. Just so many, so many things that are just coming back and forth from the time while you're watching the movie to, to once you finish the movie. There's just a lot, a lot to take in, a lot to like. Um, yeah, just a, just a, a fantastic unfolding and scary story. Um, the performances. Bill Paxton, I'm just going to go on a little diatribe here. There's very few actors or celebrities, actresses 
um, when they that pass away young or pass away period that I'm really like emotionally affected by. I mean, I feel bad and I'm not happy or anything. I feel bad for their loved ones, their family and the, the bigger fans of them. Bill Paxson, when he passed away in 2017, that one affected me. And it's somebody I'd never met, obviously. But as a celebrity, I've always been a, Bill, a big Bill Paxton fan, going all the way back to Weird Science, Aliens. I mean, you could go right down the line, all the way through um, the Twister and uh, Apollo 13 and Titanic and, and this movie. And there's, you know, even uh, Edge of Tomorrow, which he has a smaller role in that. I've, I've loved him and everything I've seen him in. And for him to not only star in this movie and be as good as he is, but to direct it and have his first directed movie be this masterpiece, in my opinion. Sorry, I got a hair stuck on in my movie there. I just have so much love for Bill Paxton. I was so sad when he passed away back in February of 2017. Um, he had so much more to do, I feel like, and to only be 61. Um, but his performance in this movie, it might be his best performance from a dramatic, creepy standpoint, at least. Not from Obviously, he's had a lot of comedic roles, which I love as well. Um, but he's just incredible in this movie. The two kid actors, Jeremy Sumter and Matt O'Leary, are also spot on in their performances. All three of the, the family characters, the dad and the two sons, all three performances are phenomenal. Spot on, very believable, and the movie wouldn't work nearly as well as it does without these great performances by these three in particular. Incredibly creepy and believable. That's how good their performances are. Um, especially Bill Paxton. He's so creepy as the dad in this movie because he's so brilliant in his performance. The other performances are fine, too. Um, but those three really stand apart for me. Um, this is a terrifically directed film, especially by the first-time director, Bill Paxton. If you would have told me this was the first film he directed, I'm not sure I would have believed you initially because this film just has too much done well to make me believe this was a first-time director. Now, obviously, Bill Paxton had been in a lot of movies. He'd been around movies for 30, 30 years or more by this time. Um, another movie that he's in is Mortuary from the early 80s, too. That was another horror film, um, which I also really liked him in. Um, but yeah, he just directs the hell out of this film as a first-time director. Very well-executed story with amazing third-act twists and turns that work. This whole movie works from beginning to end without any lulls or any missed opportunities, in my opinion. So very well directed and written. I love the f one of the biggest things I love about this movie is I love the fact that it ends up going in a different or unexpected direction. As the movie goes on, some of the, you know, you question that you, you, at least most people when they watch this movie for the first time are going to think there's certain characters that are just nuts in the head, basically, as they watch this movie. Or did they, or did, or, or are they? That's the question that the movie makes you ask. And I love the fact that they don't go in the, what you would assume is an obvious direction in the first half of the movie. Oh, I see. These kids got messed up by the dad with what he believed, with his idea of faith. And they got messed up as they got older and had all kinds of problems. And the dad was messed in the squash, basically. That's kind of the, that's kind of what you're thinking as you're watching the movie. But I love the fact that it's, it's actually not that entirely. I'm not going to give too much away here, but um, there's certain characters that as you watch the movie, you're kind of rooting for and, and, and seeing things from their point of view. And then at the end of the movie, you're like, huh, well, maybe they, maybe I was on the wrong side. I just, I love when movies do that and it's not obvious and they don't go into the sort of cliche or obvious direction. So yeah, they just, did, it's brilliantly done. Um, you just don't see it that often anymore, especially in horror movies or thriller movies. I absolutely love it. Um, what they do with the characters in the story, just turning everything on its head. They have really good character introductions, really good character arcs and, um, and, um, uh, development as well, especially the three family members, the dad and the two sons, because you actually see a little bit of them before this angel appears to the dad. Um, you kind of see that they get along, that they love each other. They're just a normal, happy, healthy family, basically. They just don't have a mom. And then obviously you see the deterioration as, as it goes on. Once the dad tells the two kids, this is what I have to do. This is what I was called to do. Um, just great character development, great character arts by all three, um, especially the two sons who obviously we see grow up and, and what happens to both of them. 
Um, they, they give just enough prior to the message from God, as I said, so that you know who these three characters really are. And you can either relate to them or you're afraid of them or it's just great, great character writing, great character development and just the right amount of, of introduction. And um, it's great to see character arcs there, too. A wonderful atmosphere throughout the movie has a very horror-like feel, especially like when they're in the Rose Garden with sort of the foggy background. It's very creepy and effective for this type of story and the type of evil that's being focused on in this particular movie, this particular thriller horror movie, if you will. Uh, the third act and the ending of this movie with the twists, to me, that, those are some of the greatest all-time twists in any movie, period, not just horror movie thriller movies and they're they make it an all-time great movie based on those twists i mean the movie already would have been really good in my opinion but those twists not one not two but not once not twice but thrice you could say thrice twists really and i'm not going to tell you what they are you got to watch the movie but i loved every twist that they gave us when you go back and watch you realize they work um, they make the overall story that much more powerful and incredibly sad as well in many ways when you really think about the underlying aspects of it. Um, as I said, especially when you go back and rewatch it. So because of that, it also has rewatch value, which you wouldn't necessarily think it would. It would be more, a little bit more like The Sixth Sense, which is a good movie. But once you've seen The Sixth Sense, it loses something. Where with this movie, I'd be able to watch it again in a couple of days and pick up on things knowing that these twists that play out at the end, it's just its just so brilliant. It really is. Um, the character just the, the character's juxtaposition. Juxtaposition. If that's, I think, I believe that's the word, juxtaposition, yeah. Um, that's another thing I wanted to get. And I talked about a little bit the fact that the characters you root for might not be the same characters you root for, should have rooted for by the time this movie's over. And I love when a movie can do that with the audience. To sum up my pros, in case you haven't had enough, this movie has great pacing all the way through, awesome cinematography, it looks great, and it has it's just an overall effectively scary conceptual movie that engages the audience the whole way through and asks a lot of questions. I mean, it, I don't really know what anybody else could want in a movie, quite frankly. This is the ultimate psychological thriller. I'm going to say it's all, also one of the ultimate horror movies as well. Just phenomenal. Those are my pros. Um, there, as far as cons go, it was I really had to nitpick, which is another reason why I know this is a really good movie, because the cons I'm going to give you are pretty nitpicky. I will say Matthew McConaughey, for all for the good performances in this movie, he wasn't quite at the top of his game yet in terms his he's an actor that's really evolved over time. He did a lot of the sort of funny over the top romantic comedy roles in the 80s and through the 90s. And now, of course, he's one of the biggest stars in Hollywood. Um, and he's a great actor now. But I think he was still kind of finding his way with this movie. I just kind of feel like he narrates a lot of this movie, so we don't really see him on camera. But you could argue that some of his narration, some of his acting is a little robotic in this movie. Now, my guess is he was told to play it that way as part of the character slash characters that he was playing. Um, but I did, but it is something that caught my eye, and that's just something I had to bring up. I'm not saying he's awful in the movie. I'm just saying it's a little bit robotic in terms of the dialogue and the narration that he gives, and even when you do see him on film. Um, but again, it might have been on purpose. It is more of a thriller than a horror movie, at least in terms of on screen horror, in terms of what you see. You're, you know, there's a lot of, there's there's killings that take place, but you don't see anything. You know, you see somebody holding an axe and swinging it, but they cut away. There's no blood or gore in this movie. So if you're looking for that kind of horror movie, you're not going to find it here. This is another one of those underlying horror movies where it really makes you think. And when you really think about it deeply, it's really disturbing, really scary. Um, and, and sometimes that's my favorite kind of horror, quite frankly. Um, so it's not really a con, it's just more of a heads up for some people that I know want to see it, if you will, on screen. And then finally, this is a nitpick, but they could have given a little bit more explanation or a little bit more character, I don't know if background's the right word, for the receptionist woman that's working at the sheriff station. We only see her in a short scene at the beginning of the movie and then at the end of the movie. We kind of know what she's there for. We kind of know that she's in a, she's kind of part of the sheriff's plan, if you will, and that's all I'm going to say on that. Clearly, she's in. A, she's kind of in on a certain lie that takes place. 
Um, but I would have it would have been interesting to have just a little bit more like where did she come from? How does she fit in? Is she just somebody that is high that has a lot of faith? That's a very Christian woman. Um, so maybe just a little bit more there. But again, these are these are such nitpicks. They have absolutely nothing to do with the greatness or the the missed opportunity of this movie. I absolutely love Frailty. I love it even more the second time I've watched it for this review. I'm close to giving this a 10 out of 10, which I don't give out a lot of those. Oh, the hell with it. I am. It's a 10 out of 10. For what it is, I think it's a 10 out of 10 thriller, psychological thriller slash horror movie. Even those little nitpick cons I had don't don't bring it down even half a point. I'm going to give Frailty a 10 out of 10. Um, I love it. I, you should watch it. You should go buy it any way that any means necessary to get it. It's a great tribute film to Bill Paxton. Both his direct, both his directing and his acting is phenomenal in this movie. And I really wish he were still here with us. Um, 10 out of 10 for Frailty. Go ahead and comment down below if you guys have seen Frailty from 2001. I know it's gaining a little bit more steam now. It it actually was a pretty well-received and reviewed movie for the most part when it came out. I know Roger, Roger Ebert also blew his load on it in his review when it first came out. But for the most part... It didn't over. It didn't wasn't amazing at the box office. It was just kind of so so, and it's a movie that definitely more people need to see. So, go ahead and comment down below if you've seen it. If you love it as much as I do, why why not? Please like this video and hit the little notification bell down below so you don't miss any of my upcoming reviews for this series. And please be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my great horror content. So, I hope you enjoyed this horror movie review of Frailty. For day nine of my uh, 31 days of Halloween horror series. Hope you're doing well. Stay scared. Bye.